We're a research and technology organisation with a roughly 50 year track record of working in high pressure, high integrity equipment. My role as principal welding engineer is to provide technical advice, consultancy, development and project management services to engineering companies and utilities worldwide. As TWI's project manager for the NIU work, I've regularly consulted colleagues in metallurgy, non-destructive examination and structural integrity, so the views that I'm expressing aren't solely mine. They are the result of um, collaboration between a team of professional engineers at an independent institute. I've got something like 35 years experience in this industry in a range of industrial sectors and I've carried out some very complex repairs, both nuclear and petrochemical. But I think the NIU is probably the most complex that I've been engaged on. Countering that, I think ACL are implementing a very robust process of weld repair development. Judged on the basis that the repairs carried out so far appear to have been totally successful. ACL have tackled the easier repair sites first to gain experience of working in vessel and are progressing on to more difficult areas. I think it's very thorough, it's a very robust process and although nothing is guaranteed it gives the best possible chance of ultimate success. But it is not going to be easy, it's only going to be successful if ACL continue with their current process of individual site development and thorough testing. The NIU is the oldest functioning reactor in the world. It's also very unusual in that it's constructed from aluminium and that aluminium has been subject to 35 plus years of very high energy neutron radiation, um, none of which makes an easy repair proposition. Added to this, you have um, extreme problems in restricted access, very large and complex repair sites and the overall restrictions of working in a nuclear environment. I think until the initial test weld was deposited inside the vessel in early December, there was no absolute guarantee that you could actually lay a weld onto a radiated aluminium. It's um, not something that's been done before, or if it has been done, it certainly hasn't been published. So it was you know, fairly clear this was going to be a very difficult, very complex repair. It's a very complex operation. The welder has to drive the machine from a remote console and he has to control current, voltage, the pulse waveform, the rate of addition of filler wire to the weld and the speed of travel across the joint. All of this has to be done remotely and simultaneously and it has to vary according to the different vessel thicknesses. So the welder has to respond very quickly in changing from one set of conditions to another to avoid a melt through. Each repair site can take up to four separate techniques to apply and each technique has to be separately developed, practiced, brought to an acceptable level, the welders have to be qualified and then all four techniques have to be integrated into one single operation. As to whether or not you get a second shot it's vitally important that we get it right first time because it is possible to actually create a defect in the overlay or even to cause um, additional damage to the reactor vessel which would then entail a further repair, further delays to schedule. You're not looking at something that can be done without practice and without development. You have to also bear in mind that we're working through a five inch diameter hole 27 feet above the repair site. If it goes wrong you can't simply reach in and fix it and I think a very fair analogy is that um, this is the engineering equivalent of keyhole surgery. The difference being that keyhole surgery, if it goes wrong, you can open the patient up and you can get in there. We can't take the top off the NIU. Um, we have to get it right first time. There is no margin of error.